This was me. As a kid, I was only interested in two things, magic tricks and music. This is me now. <laughs> as you can see, a lot's changed. I left behind magic and I traveled the world to study the human mind. I learned to play the brain like an instrument. This is not magic or sleight of hand. It's sleight of mind. The word you're thinking of would be the word funny. <laughs> Over the years, I've been called many things. I feel like he's like some kind of wizard, kind of like the real life Harry Potter. This guy is a psychopath. He's a mind But the best way to describe what I do is just to say that I read and influence people. So my, my heart, my heart, it stopped. And I was like, no way. And if you want to know what that looks like, check it out. This is what I want you to do. I want you to think of something at random that you don't feel like I could guess. Is it the word pregnant? What? <laughs> what? No, that's insane, I'm really scared. Can you see it now, Adam? Think of a drawing. Filming a mind reading show, you can see the cameras over here. If I asked you right now just to name the first number that popped into your head, what would it be? 68. 68. Do you know why you thought of that number? It came into my mind. Right now? Yeah. Have you ever heard of right place at the right time? Yeah. Kind of. Oh, oh, right. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. We're filming a show. We're filming a mind reading show. Do you want to help out? No, man, we're adding to it. Two minutes, I promise it'll only take two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah, Perfect. Yeah, Can I pin this on you? Yeah. I'm just yeah, going to put this microphone there. Look at me for a second. I want you to think of something that you don't feel like I could guess. So I want you to take your time, change your mind a few times, and settle up on either a word, a place, a name, whatever you want. But it's got to be thought of in this exact moment. If anybody's asked you to think of anything before, just dismiss it. So get something in your head. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. So look at me for a second. In your head, you're gonna give this away. It's not about what you are saying, but it's about what you are saying without knowing you're saying it. So I feel with you that this would be movement based. This would be something that's very fast paced. It'd be action. That's right, yeah. Okay, so you're quite tall. I'd say that I feel this would be something sport related, but it's not a particular sport. This would be an object or an item related to sport, I'd feel. Yeah, Think. yeah, that's true, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is quite a long word as opposed to a short one because when you're thinking about it, it's almost very vast. Are you thinking of a basketball? <laughs> okay, I didn't, didn't expect that, no. It's almost impossible to describe in words what it felt like to read a mind for the first time. So I thought instead of trying to tell you, I'd show you the closest thing that I could find. This is the incredible moment these people heard for the first time. A little bit brighter. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. okay, tug time, Zach. Oh. Here you go. You hear my voice? <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. And it's going to be on in three, two, one, go. Hi, buddy. Hi, Christopher. Hi, Christopher. Oh. I thought it might be interesting to give anybody who sits down the experience of reading a thought for the first time.
directly answers your question. That is incredible. That is, that's mental, yeah. That's <laughs> crazy, yeah. You can feel it in there, right? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you okay? Mm. And I didn't have to say a word, you just knew. Yeah, wow. Hopefully that give you the answers you're looking for. Yeah. And you experienced something profound today. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Thank you. That is absolutely crazy. Thank you Thank so, you. so, so much. Oh my God. That is mental. Thank you. What's your name? If you're lucky enough to have that one person in your life that you're so in sync with, you can look at them and without them saying a single word, know exactly what they're thinking. Raise your right arm. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm done. She can't really be in my mind. <laughs> so we need to get her out. Have you ever done that thing where you sort of look at each other and you can give one another a cursory glance and you know exactly what the other person's thinking of. Yeah, yeah. It's a weird thing, right? A thought travelling from one place to another and I'd like to experiment with that. Amelia, I want you to go stand over there for me and just face us. You could turn facing Amelia. So, cool. Georgia, you stand there. You can see us here, right? Yeah. You can hear my voice. Yeah. I want you to fill your lungs with air, Amelia. And as you slowly let that air out, I want you to close your eyes. Amelia, if you just heard me whispering in your ear, raise your right arm. Drop your arm for me. Georgia, can you just think of a word at random? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Take your time, tell me when you've got one. Mm -hmm. I want you to whisper that word quietly into my ear. Amelia, if you just heard another whisper, open your eyes and walk towards us. So you heard two different whispers there. Yeah. The first one should have sounded like a voice you don't recognise. Yeah. The second one, I'm hoping you recognise that voice. Yeah. So come a little bit closer, turn this way for me. Uh -huh. Just look at each other. Yeah. So in a moment, I'm going to snap my fingers. Uh -huh. And when I do, I want you to say the word that you whispered into my ear. Okay. And Amelia, I want you to say the word that you heard whispered inside your head. Okay. On the count three, you ready? One, two, three. Daisy. Daisy. Well, that's insane. It was weird because it, it was it was clear but almost like echoey. Who would you say is the most intuitive out of the two of you? Ooh. Intuitive. I don't know. I don't know. Probably you. Yeah? Okay. I mean, I'm not a sharp man a lot of the time. <laughs> but that's all right. What that's enabled me to do <clears throat> is decide who's going to be thinking of something and who's going to be reading it. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think of a word for me. Tell me when you've got a word in your mind. Got it, yep. You're going to stare into Laura's eyes and you're going to transmit. Now, Laura, your job is to use that intuitive nature of yours to try to pick up on what it is. Mm -hmm. But I don't want you to rush. So you're going to turn, you're going to face this way. You're going to transmit it from your mind and you're going to start to pick up on it. If you're not mm -hmm. getting anything, don't worry about saying I'm not getting anything. That's all right. But take your time, look into the theatre of his mind. Really stare into his eyes. I'm going to move out of the way and I'll let you do your thing. Come on. Open the theatre of your mind. Mm -mm. No. Absolutely nothing. If I had to guess, I'd probably say... Drink. Am I allowed to swear? <laughs> Man. <laughs> I feel a little bit sick. <laughs> An intuition test using five playing cards. If you want to know if you've got a sixth sense, play along at home. The rules are simple. I'm going to hold a playing card up like this, and all you've got to do is use your feelings to determine if you feel it's a red card or a black one. So this first one, what do you feel? Red or black? Let's keep going. This card. Red or black? Third card. 
We're down to the last two. And the last card. Use your feelings. If you've got three or four of these, that's about the amount you'd get if you were just guessing. If you've got all five, then maybe there's something more, but I'm sure you'd agree that if we played the game over and over again, it wouldn't be long until you got one wrong. And that's why I was blown away a few days ago when I had the absolute privilege to meet the most incredible woman I've ever met. She's turned me, a hardened skeptic, into a believer. Okay. Okay. So you don't know whether that's a red or a black card, no. but in a moment, you're just gonna know. If it's red, you're gonna deal it face up over here. Okay. And if it's black, you're gonna deal it face up over here. Okay, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna do 20 cards, All right? Mm -hmm. So the first one, red or black? Black, perfect. Mm -hmm. What color's the next one? Black as well. And you're genuinely, genuinely just putting these where you feel they should go. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> What's that one? Okay. So we'll go a little bit faster now. Just give those a mix in your hand, just a little bit more. Okay, that's perfect. What color is that one? Red. Perfect. Okay. I think that that proves a point like you've done absolutely incredibly there, just using your feelings to put them where they're supposed to go. This is where I want to take things up a notch. I don't know if you know the values of the cards, but we're just going to try this. I'm going to take one out at random. I'm gonna shuffle them first, and I'm gonna place this face down. So this one, what color is it first? Red. Okay, so it's obviously a heart or a diamond. Mm -hmm. What is it? I mean a diamond. So it could be an ace, it could be a two, it could be a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or a jack, queen, or a king. Take your time. Two. Two of diamonds. Done incredibly, Catherine. So you might have watched that footage and felt to yourself that there was just something a bit off. And maybe you had a sneaking suspicion that I'd edited bits out to make it seem more impressive. And the truth is, I did edit bits out, but not to make it seem better than it was. Here's a behind the scenes of all the things you didn't see. Catherine, thank you for stopping. You're this welcome. for me is going to be one of the most interesting things I think I've ever done. I want to ask a question, and if you don't mind, you don't have to answer if you don't want. Okay. I want you to be as comfortable as possible. Were you were you always blind, or did you lose your sight at a certain age? So I've been registered blind since birth. Okay. You obviously have a guide dog thank as well. You. What's your dog's name? Peppy. She's very good at getting around all these tables and oh. people and the food carts and and I'm going to put them into your hands, so they're in front of you. So if you want to take all of these, do you think you'd be able to mix them up a little bit? If you're not comfortable doing that, I can do that. Oops. That's OK. That's <laughs> perfect. I'll put it back in there. OK. OK. Now, you can't see those cards. No. <laughs> if it's red, you're going to deal it face up over here. Okay. And if it's black, you're going to deal it face up over here. Almost everyone who has had a, an arm or a leg amputated experienced the phenomenon of a phantom limb, which is a vivid sensation of that the missing limb is still present. Oh, hey, did you know that I can still feel my hand 
even though it's not there, I can still feel my toes. I could wiggle my toes. I have never not felt my foot still being there. How incredible must the human mind be if it can deceive the body into believing a limb exists when it doesn't? I reached out on social media to find somebody to see how far we could take this. And I were introduced to Laura. Now I know you said you'd never experienced phantom limb syndrome. And the question I'm about to ask you is probably the weirdest question that you'll ever be asked. Yeah. Would you like to? Yeah, yeah that sounds really good. If you want to participate, all you've got to do is drop your arm off the table and we'll begin. So I want you to look down and imagine that you can see a forearm and a hand. Now I'm going to be referring to it as if it exists. Now the reason that I'm going to do that is simple. It's because if I keep talking like it exists, it makes it easier for your brain to believe. So I want you to imagine for a second your forearm's here and you're looking at your hand. I want you to start wiggling the fingers on that hand. Imagine the feel of the table underneath those fingers, the sensations. Tell your brain what it'd feel like to feel those solid feelings under your fingers. And when you're ready, you just stop. What I want you to do for me is just move that arm and hand in front of you like this and look down at it. And I just want you to stare at the back of that hand. Look at the veins, look at the fingers. And look up at me. Keep your head at that height. Take a big deep breath in. And slowly let your eyes close. Now in a moment you're going to feel me touch you. And when you feel me touch you, I just want you to say the word now. Now. I'm going to move this down to here. You can feel this. Yeah. If I move it all the way down to here, can you feel this? Yeah. Genuinely? Yeah. Okay. Just say now when you feel it. Now. I want you to count in your head how many times you feel it. How many times did you feel me tapping you? Four. I'm going to take hold of that limb, but whatever happens, just let it happen. You can feel this? Yeah. What are you feeling? Pressure, like squeezing my hand. And you can feel me lifting that arm up and putting it back down. Yeah. I want you to really focus on that limb for me. I need you to really concentrate now. Keep it there. You can feel that, right? Can you describe what it is that you're feeling? Move something sort of soft. M moving up and down. Moving um, up and down. Yeah. If you were to describe what it felt like, what would it feel like? Soft. Fluffy, soft, quite light. Now, I know you can't see what this is, but if you were to estimate, what would you say is stroking your arm? A feather. Open your eyes and look down. That's insane. That's so weird. Yeah, it was, it was really weird. I could feel the pressure, obviously, when there's, there's, there's no arm there to, to feel. Um, I could feel like the, the, the soft sort of bit of the, of the feather sort of moving up and down my arm. Um, so my mind was just a bit, I was really bizarre, really confused. <laughs> um, but it was, it was incredible. I mean, I was born, born like this, so I've, I've never known any different. I've always been very determined and, and never, I'd never let having sort of a little bit of me missing ever stop me from doing anything I wanted to do.